Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's threat snapshot. So last week, the MITRE Ingenuity Center for Threat Informed Defense released a new framework called Micro Emulation Plans. We definitely thought we wanted to dig into this a little bit. So we're gonna go through and discuss what this is and how you can use this in your environment. So this is the blog post that's announcing this. And as you can kind of see from the title, there's gonna be a lot of Goldilocks and the Three Bears memes in this video. So uh, my advice is just deal with it. Um, so what are micro emulations? Um, I think this chart that they created, you know, really sums this up. Um, again, if we're going with Goldilocks and the Three Bears, um, you know, too hot is that full emulation. So think of a tool like Caldera. Again, they put out these uh, automated emulation plans where you can emulate, you know, full adversary kill chain. Um, as you can see, there is that um, you know red line there. The they are they are not easy to automate. Um, certainly, you you can use Caldera and their automated scripts, but there's a lot of work to stand up the infrastructure and make sure all the dependencies are there. And again, if any one of those steps in the kill chain breaks, it kind of ruins everything else afterwards. So while they're good, they're probably best left up to um, a manual red team exercise. So that's the the too hot example. I would say too cold is the atomic red or is the atomic testing. So think of tools like Atomic Red Team. Again, great framework. Absolutely love it. Um, you're validating individual test cases, so you don't really have to worry as much about you know dependencies or something breaking in the chain. I think kind of the goal and why this micro emulation fits in is again sometimes you might be looking at Atomic. Maybe it's looking at let's say data exfiltration. And you're kind of wondering, you know, how did we get to this point? Couldn't we have stopped them earlier in the kill chain? Um, what other areas are there that we can detect these? So that's really what these micro emulations are. And to give credit to um, Red Canary, I think back in 2018 or around that time, um, they had created these things called chain reactions, where, which were exactly the same thing. Again, taking multiple atomic individual tests, running those together in a compound chain. So. This isn't really a new concept, but it's just a different take on it. And again, I you know appreciate MITRE for bringing these out. Um, again, these are easier to automate. They've really gone through and made them just pretty much as painless as a double click of an executable. And they do have, again, these kind of small chains where they might take two or three behaviors um, that, again, will uh, produce a desired outcome. So definitely worth taking a look. Um, highly recommend you kind of read through this um, if you want to learn more about the, the framework. Um, this is also, again, open source on GitHub. You can read about the micro emulation plans. Again, they have about six of them available here. So if you wanted to learn more about how they're doing web shells, um, you could click into here. You could see all the resources for building. You can see an example of executing. In this case, there is just a single exe that you would execute and it would you know, perform the attack. And theoretically, you could go through and you know, see what detections um, you have in your library or create detections. And that's really, again, where Snap Attack will come and help through that. So without further ado, uh, let's dive into the platform. So first thing I'm going to talk about here is collections. So this is a new feature that we released um, a little while ago here now, but um, haven't really had an opportunity to talk through it on a video. So what are collections? Um, really, they are just a way of grouping similar content, um, adding additional context around them, and making it easy to kind of sort, filter, find. We're going to be doing a lot of work with collections here, creating them around threat actors, around you know software and malware families, around you know MITRE attack techniques, around vulnerabilities. So if you want to know how your organization would stack up against Cozy Bear or Cobalt Strike, or maybe you're still to this day trying to patch Log4j, and want to understand the threat and detections, you could find a relevant collection for those things. You could see, again, related threat intelligence, the actual threats that we capture, the detections. And it's kind of, again, that easy button of finding that curated content here. So we have a collection um, around the uh, adversary emulation plans, these, these micro emulations. Again, we provide a little bit of context. We can go here. We can see all of the threats. So there's, I think, about 10 of them in Snap Attack. Yeah, 10. And we also have 21 detections here that are, again, all validated, curated. So, you know, if you trusted us, if you wanted to just go through, you could go ahead, you could bulk deploy these to one of your configured integrations. And again, at that point, problem solved. Um, but let's actually dive in and take a look at these. So again, I think going through the, uh, uh, we'll talk about that meme here with the Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Um, 
This one I think is going to be our too hot example. So um, this is user execution of um, an ISO file. And really this is a way that attackers will gain initial access. So very frequently you have your macro enabled Word documents and other things, um, lots of filtering there. If I have an ISO, um, if it's a larger than a file, antivirus may not scan it. Um, it's very easy nowadays in Windows to actually mount the ISO. And you could go ahead and you can um, you know, launch malware from that. So we can actually take a look here at the, the video. Um, we're going to see that's going to mount this ISO to the um, E drive, the CD-ROM. It's going to automatically try and open up, run that batch file. And then it's going to kind of clean itself up and dismount. So you know, this whole video is 30 seconds. Um, lots of stuff kind of packed in here. We can actually take a look here at our timeline, take a look at the process graph of what's going on. So again, they bundled this up as a uh, single executable. This one was called ISO.exe. We can see that opening up a PowerShell command to actually run that batch file. So this is again, think of more of the operator or the um, adversary running these commands. And then we can see here, you know, some of the examples. So, and they're, and they're basic, they're gonna use some, you know, living off the land enumeration commands. So looking at who am I, enumerating tasks, enumerating, you know, desktop users and things. So we definitely have detections for those and then that kind of falls into that whole detection in depth. But if you really were looking at how do I detect that, you know, creation of um, an ISO file, the launching of an ISO file, uh, well, we have that covered too here. So. This is a, a community analytic, a way of detecting that. Again, probably the best log source for that is going to be one of the Windows event logs. Um, this is 4663. It's a security event. And again, you can look for objects around um, the device CD-ROM being created. Um, this one has a filter to avoid setup, but again, I would probably remove that. Um, reason I say this is the too hot example for our Goldilocks scenario is um, I would probably not deploy this. Um, while it is validated, while we do have a manageable number of detections, any you know image, any ISO that's going to be mounted in your environment, you're going to get hits on for this. So um, we can also see here, fun um, Atomic Red Team does have a, a executable here. So while this is um, maybe a, a chain reaction or a uh, micro emulation, uh, this can also easily be emulated as an atomic too. So. You can see examples of where this would hit, what this would detect, um, keeping in mind that process name might not be command line or PowerShell. It could be, you know, set up if they wanted to rename it. It could be just as easily a, a cobalt strike binary or some other uh, tool. So again, this is one of the ways that we could detect that. Um, next example here, um, again, this is gonna be web shells. Uh, these are historically pretty hard to emulate. Um, not so much the difficulty of finding web shells or the infrastructure, but I think just kind of getting those together um, because you have to have a web server configured. You know, there's usually how you emulate getting that web shell on there, usually through like a vulnerability or something. Um, so again, they're trying to make this simple here. And I would say this is going to be our, our too cold Goldilocks example. Um, this is on a Windows host. You can see we launched the tool and it's going to run a couple of commands. Again, really trying to simulate a web shell. Um, there's some sleep commands in between, so I'm just going to kind of fast forward through. You can see those being run here. Uh, yes, we do have detections for those. Uh, if we pivot over to the process graph, again, so we have that CMD. We launch their, their wrapper.exe, which is, again, going to launch this Windows webshell.exe, listening on localhost, port 8080. So again, they're, they're basically running their own standalone web server. So instead of running, you know, Apache Tomcat or IIS or you know, Apache 2 or something like that, they're running this here. So again, I think a lot of the web shell detections that we would have in a platform are gonna be specific to um, looking at the type of web server that it's running and watching for, again, if you see who am I or task list or some of these other tools, not just running on their own, but running under the context of, you know, Apache 2 or IIS or one of these other servers or services. Um, you would also want to be looking for the creation of a file. Um, and in this instance, um, we're not seeing a, a PHP or an ASP or some other kind of, you know, file being dropped in the web root. Um, so while this is emulating a web shell, um, I think there's definitely room for improvement in this example. So again, this is that too cold. I would not actually use this to test my web shell detections. There's certainly better opportunities there. And this is one area they could do some improvement. 
Uh, last one we'll talk about is user execution of macros. Uh, I think everyone is familiar with this because macros are just so prevalent as a, a spear phishing example. Again, it's beyond just a regular Word document where you can um, embed additional code, again, the macro, and you can use that to launch arbitrary commands, you know, set up command and control infrastructure. I think everyone is pretty familiar with this. Um, we can watch the video. Again, these micro emulations being very small. So um, they will open up um, this um, DOCM. A, a, it's a macro enabled Word document. Uh, you can click the enable to actually launch the payload and then you know tear that down so mostly automated nice to package it up again typically what do we look at here in this so we have our uh, binary this is the test case that they have it's going to launch word you can see here it's launching this um you know macro enabled document and then that is going to launch cmd and run a who am i so very typical path, very typical kill chain for macro enabled documents. Um, how would I detect? How would I hunt for this sort of thing? Again, this is pretty trivial here. This one uh, detection is just Microsoft Office products spawning a Windows shell. Um, so again, what is this looking for? It's looking for WinWord or Excel or PowerPoint spawning any of these processes like a CMD, a PowerShell, WMIC, you know, whatever that sort of thing is. So again, this is validated. This is high confidence. This is something that I could actually alert on in my SOC. And just for that, again, with the ease of snap attack, I can, you know, with one click here, deploy this to a configured integration. So in this case, I'll deploy this to our Sentinel-1 stack. And that's going to now be deployed as a star rule so that we can start detecting if any of these um, signatures are going to hit in our environment. So anyways, that's micro emulation plans. Definitely going to keep a look in this and see what other uh, you know cool techniques MITRE releases. Hope you enjoyed this snapshot. It is a weekly series. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.